no doubt about it, this video is going to cause um, anger, emotions to rise, and you know, even to a point where the terms that I've used is appalling, uh, inhumane. All right, Chief, let's start by just talking about the video that people are going to see tonight. Can you give us any specifics about how it's going to be released and exactly what time it'll be released? So um, it's our plan to release it tonight around 6 p.m. And anybody can, can access that video on the city's website. Uh, it'll be a link you, there. Have you had to edit out <clears throat> anything that just would be too difficult to see, or is it the whole no. thing and it's ugly? What, what's in that video is the most substantive portion of what happened that night. There's nothing that's eliminated out of that video that would contribute to charges, to, that would contribute to anything else. Um, you know, some of the other portions of video is, you know, people standing around after uh, Mr. Nichols is not on the scene anymore, just blank kind of stuff. There will be um, four different segments of video that's actually patched together, which adds up to be a little bit over an hour of time. Yeah. Okay. You and others who've seen it uh, have not minced words about what we're all going to watch. Uh, I wonder if you think that has contributed to maybe some unnecessary concern. Uh, are the number two, the two most popular words being searched right now in Memphis, yes. which we're able to access, are riots and protests. Yeah. And yeah. we have businesses shutting down. We mm -hmm. have schools uh, mm -hmm. not having any extracurricular activities mm -hmm. after school. Do you think that is an overreaction or not? You know, it's hard to, it's really hard to tell because no doubt about it, this video is going to cause um, anger, emotions to rise. And, you know, even to a point where the terms that I've used is appalling, uh, inhumane. And, and, and I, I haven't been, you know, shy about saying that because I want people to be ready. I remember the Rodney King video. I remember the George Floyd video and other videos that have been seen by the public and the reaction to those videos. I think some of what might curtail, and I don't know for sure, is that in some of the, re the, the previous types of crisis like this, action was slow, people were still employed, um, Charges were never filed, you know, sometimes when officers, you know, go off the rails or commit crimes, actions that are considered crimes, and the community becomes outraged. They want action. You know, even though we've taken action, they'll still be outraged. Uh, I don't know what that response is going to look like. I really don't. But I've encouraged um, the individuals that live in the Memphis area that I know that plan protests. Uh, we have had great conversations. Um, there will be a group that plans to do a peaceful protest on, um, on tomorrow. And um, I've sort of tried to give them, you know, uh, some advice about other people joining in. Because sometimes, like Atlanta's experiencing right now, individuals that don't live in that city and we don't want that here. We don't want people that don't live in our city to come here and, you know, create public safety issues for our citizens, you know, damage property, um, act out in violent ways. What precautions is the department taking uh, for that very thing to happen? So we've been planning for several days now. You know, we knew that this video would be released. We didn't know exactly when. We didn't know um, how long it was going to take the different entities that are in the investigative process to get done with their very important interviews that they needed to do before the video was released. But we're in a good place now that the DA has done what he needs to do to release the video. Um, we have been communicating not just here locally, but I've been on three different calls on the national level about the response to this video. And um, major city chiefs, uh, I, I was on a call with them last Saturday, they are concerned about the same type of reaction that they had with the George Floyd situation. And rightly so, they wanna protect their cities and they know that what happens in Memphis is whatever response happens here can happen around the country too. 
We have local agencies here that we partner with and have uh, mutual aid agreements, and they have been in conversations. We've had several calls with the state um, officials as well, and even National Guard. Yeah. If it comes to that. If it comes to that. We hope it doesn't come to that. Uh, there's been some criticism about releasing the video on a Friday night at 6 p.m. as yeah. the bars are opening up uh, and, and, and businesses are closing and schools are out. Your response to that? We have had so many different opinions about when to release and when not to release. Um, our main thought had a lot to do with the business week. People, you know, in our downtown space, We've spoken to school super, the school superintendent and the schools are concerned about when we release the video. And so what we were hoping to do was identify a time when most people are headed home, the schools are already out, and if we did have some type of you know, problem with protesters or whatever, we were managing the protesters and not having to you know, help save people that get caught up in the middle, including our, our, our kids. Was there a thought to holding it for, through the weekend and maybe releasing it on a Monday? There was a thought uh, to that, but um, you know, there's been a lot of push. People have wanted that video out like yesterday. And uh, I think the, the mayor and the administration is of the belief that he wants to deliver it to them as soon as he can. And, uh, and I understand that, but I, but I do believe that we, we should always be cognizant of the residual impact of, of releasing the video and the timing of it. You've been very candid about the video. Uh, I think you said this morning it was the most horrifying and sad point of your career. Uh, what we've heard said about it, including your own words, everything that's lacking, including in the charges that were announced yesterday, is the why. That's right. Why would five men do this to a fellow human being? Yes. And we hear that there might be a woman involved, uh, a, a relationship that could have existed. Are there any, because of the way the attack was so personal, and I've right. interviewed enough detectives over my career right. to know right. when there's a stabbing or if it's mm -hmm. a, you know, a beating, that it's personal. Right, right. And usually. Yeah. Do you, is that where the investigation is going? Now? Do you have any leads at all on what <laughs> might have caused it? You know, we, we've vetted through some of the rumors trying to figure out, is, was there some nexus between Tyree and some other person? I've even, I was even told that someone thought that he had a relationship or he knew one of the officers. We haven't been able to confirm anything that would tie one of those officers to Tyree Nichols. If there is information out there, I mean, we want that information. Um, and this is the first time I've heard about a woman you know, being involved or having some type of connection. And, and I'm assuming you mean in some relationship. A shared relationship, perhaps, or? Uh, and I hadn't heard that, Richard. I hadn't heard that. But, you know, this is the second time that I've heard that that might have been a rumor. It, it would be great to have, you know, that information. Uh, and I would appeal to anybody in the public that could shed some light on that. Because it's still very unclear and very ambiguous to us what caused this stop? And even more importantly, what caused these officers or the initial officer to be aggressive at the very beginning of the stop? It's like something happened before that we haven't been able to figure out because we don't have video footage from it. We've looked at videos in the area. We've asked for private video just to see if there was some, you know, stretch of road that captured reckless driving or anything like that. The video starts when the officer is getting out of the car. You have to believe at least one of those five officers could give you some insight. And, he, you know, when they're in an investigation, sometimes you don't get all the information that you want. And now, you know, once the TBI comes in, we don't question anymore. We go ahead and finish our investigation. We had enough mm. to be able to move forward with the administrative investigation. I would love to be able to, you know, further, you know, ask what happened uh, or do you know or did you know Tyree Nichols before this incident occurred? You know, in our minds, this was just a motorist 
that they pulled over. Yeah. Uh, it has to be incredibly frustrating. I mean, you, everybody wants to know the why, but you almost feel in this case, the city needs to know. The city needs to know the why. And one day we might find out the why, you know, um, just, you know, with subsequent and concurrent investigations going on at the same time, you know, at some point the police department's hands are off from probing any further. I'm hoping that we figure out why. And it was, it was not a good feeling for me to tell, you know, Ms. Wells that this video is not going to help you understand why. Because you see what the most egregious part of that night was happening on that video. It's almost like most of the time officers go from one to five and then, you know, at the highest, ten. This video starts off at about a ten, which is very confusing. Uh, you had said that more action may be taken against other officers. Can you be more specific? Yes. Anytime, you know, in my past, anytime I do an investigation um, on officers that may have had, you know, some type of egregious infraction or just an infraction in general, I always look at other people that may have been culpable in that instance. And right now we have, you know, uh, other individuals, of course, they're uh, policy violations aren't as egregious as these five, but whether it's action or inaction, there's policy violations. You know, there is oversight, supervision. There are several issues that raise concern for us. And as we probe uh, administrative, not notifying who needed to be notified. This incident occurred at 8 o'clock the previous night. I was notified at 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, these are the kind of things that are breakdowns in communication, even, you know, at the higher levels. So we're looking deeply into that. So it sounds like what you're saying is it doesn't matter how high up the chain uh, the accountability needs to happen, it's going to happen. Absolutely. Because ultimately, I'm accountable. I've always been an accountable leader. I've never faced a situation like this before in my entire career. I've never had to get out of my bed because someone was in the hospital and no one could explain to me why this person was in anything that made sense to me. To get up on a Sunday morning and come in to see for myself what occurred, you know, that previous night. How long after that phone call at 4 a.m. did you see the video? And was that the turning point for you in saying, oh my, we're on this, we've got a huge, huge story, huge case here? Absolutely. So the four o'clock call came in the office, I called the mayor and the city attorney. I didn't know what was going to be on the video, but I told them that something is on this video that I think we need to look at because I have a young man that's in critical condition in the hospital. So we met Sunday morning at 10 o'clock here at police headquarters, and that's when the ball started rolling. Okay. Um, the DA in his news conference yesterday seemed to call you out uh, for not being there. Yeah. I heard it and I thought, you know, it just hit me funny. Yeah. Uh, so I want to know, is there any there there? Yeah. Uh, did you choose not to come? Were you invited not, and chose not to come? Right. Was there a reason why you were not there? Oh, so, you know, I, I'm just going to tell you what, you know, what my feeling was about that. You know, in all my years, anytime I plan a press conference or anytime another entity plans a press conference, they invite the individuals that they want on the stage with them to the press conference. They give you a run of show, they say who's speaking, who's not speaking, and they tell you exactly where you stand. I was not invited to the press conference. So it surprised me just as much as surprised everybody else when I was sort of called out that, you know, where is the chief? If I was invited to that press conference, I would have absolutely been there. I didn't know if that was an oversight that the new district attorney didn't know that invitations were supposed to be sent out or if it was intentional that this press conference was to be for the TBI and the DA, and we were basically left out. So his response was very surprising to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what specifically is being reviewed to reform the hiring practices? There's such pressure on you right now to yeah. recruit officers. Yeah. I mean, you're just treading water. You're not yeah. able to gain any traction right. there. And 
I just wonder how much are you looking at the recruiting process, especially yeah. when you look at the how long those five officers had been on the force? Yes. So um, when I got here, I, I did change the hiring process. You know, um, I've been here a little over a year and a half, but one of the things that changed in the hiring process was to stop hiring um, officers on a waiver. When you hire officers on a waiver, that means that they have something that could be, you know, a blemish or a tarnish, you know, kind of background. You have to go down to Nashville, go before, you know, the state board and beg to hire this officer. When I came, we hire no one now unless they have a clean background. So we don't do the waivers anymore and take the chances that if a person committed some type of, you know, uh, egregious act on a previous job, we could potentially get that here. So everyone that comes through our academy now, these are individuals that have clean backgrounds. We have been very successful in hiring. We've, we've ramped up that hiring process. Last year we put over 300, we hired over 300. That was a record. And I, I have to say that I hope, and I know this is going to be a hard blow on the Memphis Police Department, but I hope that my new campaign will be more about getting people to be part of a change. We talk about police reform. I went to the Senate and went before the Senate Judiciary Committee to talk about police reform as a subject matter expert. I believe in procedural justice and uh, impartial policing and so on and ensuring that we are, are legitimate in what we do every day. What I've got to do here in the Memphis Police Department is take a deeper dive into the culture. You know, the, the saying that you can't rebuild Rome in a day, we have to look at the culture of our department. We have to be honest. These Scorpion teams aren't the only teams that operate the way they do. I have several specialized units. Police departments around the country operate with various types of task force and specialized units. I still think that we need to look at all of them. I don't want to take for granted that everybody is being supervised appropriately. They're being held accountable. And we plan to, to have the International Association of Chiefs of Police who's partnering with the Department of Justice. I spoke to them last night and they said, CJ, we'll be glad to come down and take a deep dive for you. So there will be boots on the ground for an independent evaluation, not just of these units, but also of all of the other specialized units so that we don't have these types of incidents that just completely turn our city upside down. Got two more questions. Sure. And I hope they'll have short answers. Um, when you, uh, were there any red flags in the five officers that were fired when you look at, before they were hired, speaking to what you're, you're saying regarding recruiting? Yeah. That as you look at their records, you're like, mm, we should have probably passed on that. I was told that one of the officers had a use of force complaint over at the county. Right. And I was told that that case was dismissed. Of course, he was hired before I got here and before we went through this waiver, you know, elimination of waivers. Um, the other officers, we didn't see anything in their backgrounds. They even, I also wanted to see what kind of disciplinary histories they had because even when you go to a specialized unit, you can't go to a specialized unit if you have disciplinary issues, you know, in your file. So there was no red flags that stood out. Two of my officers had a use of deadly force, which raised concern for me when I saw that. And then I found out both of them were dealing with a dog. They were attacked by a dog and used deadly force in that situation. But there was no other use of force complaints that really raised a concern. Which makes it even more confounding. I'm yes. Sure to you. Uh, then I guess the larger question is your concern about what this whole event, uh, how it reflects on our city. Yeah. I think a lot of us are just, you know, we're getting phone calls from our relatives and family and yeah. what's going on in that. Yeah. So you had the Liza Fletcher situation, yeah. the, ramp, the uh, shooting rampage <coughs> shortly thereafter. There's just been a lot happening yeah. there lately. And I just wonder what your, your overall thoughts are about that. So, you know, I think coming to Memphis, my main concern was how do we change the narrative about a city that has so much great history? I consider great history. And, you know, the connection for me was with Atlanta, home of the civil rights movement. I thought this was a great fit for me. 
But Memphis is a heavy lift. We have crime, and I knew that. But I also realized that we can't perform the work and do the job at the highest level and with excellence until we take a really good look inside antiquated practices, culture, lack of supervision, and all kinds of other issues that the administration has been working with me on, especially even add 125 new field level supervisors. That's one of the issues that, that has raised concern for me from day one, that the department was woefully undersupervised. If we had supervisors, boots on the ground, with these officers, then someone could have intercepted what happened. And that's hindsight at this point, but I know that the city is working quickly to help me fill those 125 supervisor positions so that we can have supervision appropriately. Moving forward, you know, the nation is looking at us. Chiefs around the country have applauded the Memphis Police Department. They feel like this incident sets a precedent. I would hate that somebody's life loss would have to be the reason that it sets a precedent, that we should deal with officers quickly, swiftly, and they should be treated like other people that commit crimes. That's why I don't apologize for what I did. And I've let my officers know. I did a video to the public, I did a video to them. And I told them, I will support you 100% when you do the right thing. But if you do not take care of our citizens, you do not have my support and you don't get to wear this uniform. So, you know, with that said, I'm hopeful. Clergy have reached out, community members have reached out, you know, various organizations ask, what can I do to help? For me, that gives me hope that there are people out there that really want to help move in, in another direction and even heal after this. I pray for Ms. Wells and her husband, you know, for her hurt. And, you know, I've told my officers, this is a heavy cross to bear. You know, I grieve for that family. So, but. Well, we'll let that be it. I'll let Ian get a couple of two shots. Yeah, I, and real quick, yeah. um, Attorney Crump and Romanici just announced a civil suit against the Memphis Police Department and the Scorpion Unit calling for the immediate disbandment. Do you have a response to that? Um, that's news to me, and really, I, I, I won't respond to that right now.